Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James D. Julia Auction House up in Maine. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that they're selling in their October of 2015 auction. And the one that I've brought up today is I think possibly the coolest carbine ever made. This is a, a Ferdinand, Ferdinand von Monlicker carbine. It is in an almost unheard of cartridge. It uses the 7.63, sometimes I see it called the 7.65, by 32 millimeter Monlicker. Uh, this is a cartridge that was only used in this gun. Um, I have in fact been unable to find anyone who even knows what the ballistics of it were. But it looks basically like 7.63 Mauser, a little bottleneck cartridge, but about the size of say 30 carbine. So I suspect the performance was probably kind of in that realm. Um, the overall length was 45 millimeters, the case was 32, and it's a really cool example of, of just about the first example of an intermediate sized cartridge in a carbine. I think had this been anything other than an experimental gun, it could have been a really interesting, say, trench carbine in World War I, perhaps. Um, at any rate, uh, mechanically, the action is based on Monlicker's 1896 pistol, which you will often find referred to as the 1901 pistol and the difference between when they hit the market and when the patents were filed, um, when they hit the commercial market. It is a, uses a mechanism very, actually conceptually pretty similar to the C96 Mauser, although this, it was developed independently and pretty much simultaneously by Monlicker and the Mauser uh, company, the Federally brothers at Mauser. Um, what makes this interesting, of course, is it's that pistol, it's been scaled up to this larger cartridge, and it's also uh, been scaled up into a carbine instead of a pistol. Now this is, you know, we're going to refer to this, and I think this is the only example known of this gun, um, it's referred to as a model of 1901 slash 1904. The reason for that is the basic pistol design was 1901, and then it incorporates a specific uh, patent that Manlicher filed in, 18, in 1904. Uh, in fact, it was his last patent, and in a couple countries it was actually filed by his wife a couple days after he died. Uh, the gun is recoil operated, and they did make a standard little carbine version of the pistol in 7.63 Manlicker, uh, 7.63 by 25. The problem with it was that because it's recoil operated, the barrel reciprocates, and on the standard pistol carbines, the handguard is attached to the barrel. So if you're holding it and you actually hold the handguard steady, you're going to make the gun malfunction because the handguard won't be able to reciprocate. Well, that's what he fixed on this version is now the handguard is fixed to the receiver and doesn't move and the barrel can slide uh, underneath the handguard. So like I said, this is recoil operated, meaning that when you fire, the barrel actually physically moves. So the barrel goes back, the upper half of the receiver goes back with it, just like that. And once this has traveled that short distance, that disengages the locking lug and then allows the bolt to reciprocate the rest of the way, like so. So as you can see, this locks open on an empty magazine. I believe the magazine held six cartridges. Here it is. It's very much like a, the typical non-liquor pistol magazine, but scaled up, a little bit bigger for the bigger cartridge. Uh, magazine release is this little button here. Just pull back and the magazine can come out in your hand. There we go. Gun's a little bit stiff, which we'll, we'll give it a pass on because it is uh, about 110 years old and a prototype. In fact, if we look at the rear sight, you can see that they never got around to marking range uh, notations on there. That's always a sign of a prototype rifle. Now this bolt handle looks like it's in the way of the sights, but in fact we have a little semicircular cutout so that you can see your sights through the traveling bolt handle. That doesn't cause any problems. Our safety is back here. Pop this guy up. It's pretty stiff. The gun is now safe. Disengages the trigger. Push that down and now the gun will fire. Right there. This is actually an external cocking handle. So if a round misfires, you can recock the gun. It's connected directly to the hammer. So this is also uh, kind of a, a cocking indicator. If this is back, you know the gun's ready to fire. Disassembly here is actually pretty simple. Uh, like on the pistol, we have a little button right here. If I pull that back, I can then pull the trigger group out. Be a little bit 
gentle with this. There we go. Once the trigger group is out, then I can slide the upper and lower assemblies apart, just like that. And this fantastic wooden handguard also comes loose, although I'm not going to take it all the way off because that would require removing the nose cap here and some screws, and I don't want to really mess with that. So inside there, we can see our working mechanism. Inside here is pretty much nothing. This is basically just the frame that everything else rides in. So Monlicker's locking system is pretty simple. This is our bolt. This is our locking piece. When the whole thing is forward, this locking piece is pushed up and the back of the bolt and the front of the locking piece right there are locked together. That prevents the bolt from opening. When this recoils backwards, this curved surface right here is pushed forward. So this curved surface gets pushed forward by this little bit of rail or gets pushed down. That pushes this locking block like that. Once that's up, then the bolt. So once that's up, the bolt can freely travel. Now this is a little wonky to do here because I have the pieces disassembled. When the gun is assembled, everything act, the, the parts act on each other and, and keep everything in location. It's a little bit, little bit different when the gun's in pieces. So the locking block is actually held in place by this pin, which is easily removable because when the gun's assembled, it's held in place by the outer, the lower frame. So if I pull that pin out, I can actually take out our locking block here. We've got these two round cammed surfaces that force it to move. This is the axis that it pivots around. And then this nice shiny surface is where it locks against the bolt. So that's what's keeping it, keeping everything nice and safe until the, the whole action has recoiled and pressure has dropped. The so when this is all assembled in the gun, it sits pretty much like this, pivots up and down to lock and unlock. And then the reason for this big slot in the locking block is to allow the hammer to move through. So if we there we go. When the hammer fires, hammer drops, comes up like that, and it's got the space to do it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've been really eager to get a, a look myself at this carbine. I think it's just really cool looking, and I really like the idea of the cartridge that it uses. It's kind of too bad that the cartridge is totally unobtainium. Um, if someone were to buy this, I'm sure you could make ammunition for it. It'd be a little bit of a developmental process, but with the proper motivation, probably wouldn't be an issue. Uh, it is, of course, for sale. Uh, here at James Julia coming up in October. If you're interested in getting it yourself, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link to the Julia auction catalog page on this gun. There you can see their description and their pictures and uh, place a bid online or come up here and participate in the auction live. Thanks for watching.